also placing faith in Jesus Christ leads us to have a desire within ourselves to be washed away from all our sins. And that is done through the ordinances of baptism and confirmation. Now before I go on explaining this ordinance of baptism, I'd like to explain the words of, of what an ordinance is. An ordinance is a sacred ceremony or rite that shows we have entered into a covenant with God. So what is a covenant? A covenant is a binding and solemn agreement between God and man. So, in other words, an ordinance is like an, an, an act that outwardly shows that we have made a covenant or promise with God. Now, when we obey the terms of this covenant, God promises to bless us. And these ordinances are performed by proper priesthood authority. So baptism is an ordinance. And we can understand what this covenant is that we make when we are baptized through a scripture that is found in the book of Moroni, chapter 4. And this verse here is, is quoted weekly, actually, in our church services that helps us to remember this covenant that we made at baptism. And it's Moroni chapter 4 verse 3. That they are willing to take upon them the name of thy son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them. So that is our side of the covenant. And in return, God promises us his spirit to be with us always. He promises us to be washed away or forgiven of all of our sins and to be born again. Now, how are we baptized? We are baptized by immersion, which means we are taken completely under the water and brought back up, which represents an end of our old lives, a death or a burial, you might say, of sin, and being born again and starting a new life as a disciple of Jesus Christ. The symbolism we can see in the book of Romans that I would like to read. So in Romans chapter 6 verse 4 it explains about the symbolism of baptism especially how it relates to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And that's exactly what baptism does is it gives us that chance to, to walk in the newness of life. Now what about little children? Do little children need to be baptized? We can learn of this important doctrine in the book of Moroni, chapter 8. So I will read a few verses. And starting in, in verse 10. Behold, I say unto you, that this thing shall ye teach, repentance and baptism unto those who are accountable and capable of committing sin. And their little children need no repentance, neither baptism. Behold, baptism is unto repentance, to the fulfilling the commandments, unto the remission of sins. But little children are alive in Christ, even from the foundation of the world. If not so, God is a partial God, and also a changeable God, and a respecter to persons, for how many little children have died without baptism? So we learn that little children do not need to be baptized because they are redeemed through the mercies and grace of our Savior Jesus Christ. And the reason that is, is because they are not capable of committing sin. They are not accountable at that age.
So at what age do children become accountable? We learn that the age is eight through revelation that was given to the prophet Joseph Smith. And this was recorded in a book that we use called The Doctrine and Covenants. And I'd like to read out of section 68. Verse 27. And their children shall be baptized for the remission of their sins when eight years old and receive the laying on of hands. So, with that truth in mind, um, a very important part as well of the Gospel of Jesus Christ is something that we do every week when we go to church. And it, and it is the time when we partake of the sacrament. The sacrament is bread and water that we partake that represents the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. It helps us to remember and renew those covenants or promises that we made at baptism as earlier when I quoted the scripture that we read. So, by following the example of Jesus Christ and fulfilling that essential step of baptism, we can continue our journey to returning back to our Heavenly Father. And the reason why that is, you know, in the scriptures we learn in John chapter 3 verse 5 that no person can enter the kingdom of God unless they have been baptized.